Hi viewers, I'm Paul Dvorak, editor of Wind Power Engineering Development Magazine. Let's talk about manufacturing. At a recent conference, a colleague from a Chicago-based machine shop, Blay, showed me the pictures of the huge parts his team manufactures for the wind industry. Gearbox housing, the torque arms, for instance, looks more than six feet in diameter. Main shafts for a turbine are some six feet long and two feet in diameter, with a five-foot diameter flange on one end. The company manager, Mike Milbrands, says wind energy uh, may be the only industry that needs parts of automotive cost and aerospace quality. What it means is high, it's inexpensive and high precision. His remark on quality also means that wind turbine parts must be made or repaired by trained and skilled machinists. But I find these people, I asked him. Oh, he shook his head. He said, it's a challenge. If you know any, send them over. He was only half kidding. He explained that the most difficult position to fill are for machinist setup tasks because of years' experience needed. Bill Brand says his shop keeps an almost permanent help wanted sign out. Uh, it's likely to get worse because a skilled laborer is beginning to retire. Bill Brand says his shop is a small training program to move, move up uh, people up the ranks, but a 60 person company can't afford to train people in the basics. He relies on the local community colleges for recruits. He hunts for talent at job fairs. Others in the manufacturing industry echo Milbrandt's comments. The good news is that starting salaries for these people right out of community college is about $15 an hour, or about $30,000 a year. It tops out at least $27 an hour. With overtime, bonuses, and tuition, reimbursement, and benefits, I'm told a six-figure income is possible. So why in an era of over 8% unemployment, probably more, does a career with decent pay, almost guaranteed employment, and respect go begging for workers. There are several theories. One is that the skilled trades are not promoted in schools anymore. The 60s and 70s, high schools and machine shops and metal shops along with drafting classes. Those are mostly gone. The emphasis now is on college. Those who graduate from vocational schools are quickly snatched up by the industry. Or they don't stay with the trade. Maybe they don't realize the machine tool is a computer peripheral. And although the job can get dirty, it's a lot cleaner than it once was. The obvious solution of the shortage is to once again promote the trades in high school, because not everyone is meant for college. I'll bet most high school students don't even know such a career exists. They tell the girls, too. One HR manager tells me the most productive machinist is a woman. Dean Kamen, prolific inventor, observed that we get what we celebrate. This nation celebrates sports and entertainment figures. So there's a great interest in those careers. The irony is that none of them would be possible if someone had first manufactured the equipment and TVs that bring sporting events and entertainment into our homes. Manufacturing is the bedrock of the economy, and it creates wealth. If it goes away, we can kiss the recovery goodbye.